one to the other screen so I can pause and continue when I need all right so um, one thing that you need to know is uh, that now in C++ um, you can uh, uh, do initialization losing curly brackets so um, like um, um, we used to have stuff like having integer a like set to 5 uh, instead of doing that what you can do you can do it in many different ways you can write something like uh, integer b and put curly bracket and put 5 that's it that means it's going to be set to 5 you can say integer b is uh, set to five that nobody does why typing extra stuff when you don't need it um, and that can be done to anything like uh, um, if I want if I have a pointer I want to nullify that pointer or if, if I have an integer I want to set that thing to its default value I can say integer a and I just do this that means it's null. Uh, is there a question or no yeah so uh, or um, if I have an array and I want to set the, all the elements to zero, all I need to so oh, that's C and D, and I'm gonna E over here. So integer say E uh, 40 over here, and I can or 400. I can simply uh, set them all to zero by uh, doing this, easy and breezy. That's uh, uh, new uh, way of initialization in. Um, C++ and it works for anything but remember this is initialization you cannot set things to it so people think that I can now that I did that now I can go D3 you can't do that this um, is for initialization only and nothing else and also you can mm, do the regular initialization that you have done like mm, like something like double F E, F, and I'm going to put over here G. And you can do something like G, say, of 4. And you can do 1, 2, point zero and 3.4. Something like that. Okay? So um, this uh, is um, a new way of initialization that you can use for all your, uh, all your things. So, for example, if you have a... Uh, a um, a, con a class that's a, that has a constructor say uh, if I have uh, something like um, over here let's say class name and the name of mine has character uh, first and say last and I have over here a constructor that constructs this thing going name uh, character pointer f character pointer uh, l and in here um, uh, let, let's change that one to something other than that let's coordinates better coordinates and I'm gonna make this integer x and y and in here I'm going to say coordinates and um, in here if I have something like x integer x and integer y so in here I'm going to say this x is x and for example I want to set uh, yeah uh, x and uh, also, mm, let's call it MX not to use this, so I can give you the example better. So if I have over here M.X is that one, you can actually initialize it like this over here too. So I'm going to say over here something like uh, um, MY, and instead of parentheses, you can actually put the initializer, uh, the, the aggregate initialization over here and do Y like that. So it works the exact same way. Also, if you wanted to initialize name, you can say uh, co coordinate, you can say coordinate C and put curly bracket over here, say 10 and 50. 
that works the exact same way as uh, using uh, uh, parentheses. Uh, are we okay with this? Of course you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put number 13, you mean, line number 13. Yes. But I put two Bs over here, probably because I didn't compile. I don't know. <laughs> you mean why I have two variables and I, and I didn't get an error? Is that the question? No, there's it, impossible. It's, a, it's an error. 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 Yes, it's an error. <laughs> it's an error. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, and uh, Saksham if I pronounce your name properly. You have a question? Oh, okay, so I just said, is there any question? Uh, is everybody okay if I said yes? Asusa, you said no. So <laughs> I just want to make sure that, uh, okay, we're good. All right, that's fine. All right. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. It's going to happen to me soon too, probably. So don't worry. <laughs> We're okay. All right. So that's that. So that's uh, um, uh, that's that. Let me just uh, save that one. I'm going to call it, say, uh, A initialization CPP. Next thing. Uh, range based for loops so you you like remember like when we had some like we have, let's say we have integer a and I have <clears throat> one two three or a like that and I have let's say over here five and and I have an array like 10 20 30 40 and 50 I have something like this, and when I want to actually write a loop for this, we would go for i equals 0, int i equals 0, and i less than 5, and i plus plus, and, and we print this like that. Now what you can use is called a, a, a range base for loop. So what you do in here, you will say uh, integer reference, call it, let's say, element, uh, and then in here you're going to say in A and now it's going to set this reference one by one to all those things until the, the, the loop is over so you can so you can actually say over here C out mm, element and out so you do like this it's going to actually go through it and one by one print every and each element that you have in it until you get to the end this range based for loop is coming going to come handy later on <clears throat> for uh oh where is my execution well compiling it's taking a long time there you go so as you see it's 10 20 30 40 50 um so we're okay with this ref, uh range based loop as you see it now okay but when you are doing it like some uh, you will see later on that sometimes when you are going through um collections and we're going to when we're going to come to collection and see what collections are the reason you have this range based loop now is that we have collections in C++ which are kind of sophisticated type of arrays um, that you have um, so sometimes when you are dealing with the elements you really don't know what the element is in there uh, because of different types of things that you have they are uh, uh, inherited templated and things like that so you really you're not 100% sure what the element is over here, type of the element is. If that's the case, your for loop can change to this. So you can say for 
auto now that's where auto actually comes in which means it creates a reference of uh, let's call it like element again and when you say a automatically it gets what the element of the type of the element is and it it performs the same action so auto essentially grabs the type uh, and sets it that way so um, you can have access to the to the elements of the thing and and maybe it's a huge type name that you don't want to retype or you don't want to make a mistake auto over here is your friend and it works the exact same way uh, are we okay with this down to this point all right Melissa and Henley are you here All right, so, oh, you're using food, so, okay, that's all right, so now I know, so next time your name doesn't come up, I know that uh, you're okay, but if you have a question, activate your microphone and say it, okay, so if you don't say anything, I know we're good. Um, so this would be, um, B range based for loop. Now, um, um, there is something that is mentioned in here that I have to tell you what it is. It's probably not going to come handy very much throughout the semester, but um, there's going to come a time that you may need to know what is this. Say, how can I put this? Say you have a piece of memory that uh, is... Um, is very important. Um, let's say you don't have, um, like to give you a good example, let's say uh, you don't, your memory is is very much, uh, you have, you ha you're, you're programming a microcomputer that has just few bytes of memory and you need to use that memory the best you can. So, for example, if you want to double value, you want to use like eight bytes of your memory for that double value and then you're done with it you don't need that double value anymore with regular variables that you create that double value is allocated and is double and you can't do anything with it then you create another if you like one an integer then you have to create an integer separately and use it and then if you want a, a short seven byte say character string then you have to create another one and therefore, you use that precious little memory that you have because the, the computer that you have is very small. There is a way to do it. So C++, this is not actually C++, it's C. C is capable of looking at the same piece of memory in many different ways. So essentially it means, let me see if I can actually do it like this. I don't have my pen with me, but I am going to try it and do it like this, see if it works. So let's say I have, so if this is the memory that you have, I'm doing it with my finger so it's not very, uh, you can see that square thingy on the thing, right? Can somebody tell me? Yeah, you can see it obviously, yeah. So if the piece of memory that you have, if this is your piece of memory that you want to deal with and that's the size of double, you want to be able to have that little piece of memory and look at it exact look at the exact same place but as an integer or even more you want to look at the same place as an array of 8 characters how can you do such a thing of course, you can 
hack it by using a void pointer so you can create a void so you can create a double then create a void pointer to that double and then cast it to different things so you can hack that one but if you don't want to do it and you want to easily write code with it with no problem what you can do is actually this take a look so in if you want to to have a piece of memory and deal with that piece of memory with different things you can create what we call a union so a union essentially says anything a union let's say what do I call it uh, <laughs> character integer and double so I call it CID so so what happens in here I create a double Let's call that one A. Then I'm going to create an integer over here. I'll call it B. Then I'm going to create a character C with eight characters in it. Now, if you look at the size of the CID, so if I go C out size of CID, what you will see would be eight. You see that? Let me make that a little bigger. So as you see, it becomes 8. So which means if it was a structure, obviously the size would have been bigger than this. So if I create that one to a, like create the exact same thing with a structure, and I call it SCID, if I show the size of the structure, obviously that's going to be, what, like 24 characters? Let me just... Uh, SID, SCID, and if I show the value, you will see that it is actually 24, 24 uh, bytes. So, how to access all those things? If I want to, I can actually create, say, uh, um, something that as let's let's make it capitalized so it's CID because it's a so I'll call it C, C I, C I D. And the structure thingy, we don't need it. I'm just going to comment in. How to... Um, yeah, let it be. I'm just going to put CID over here. So now, if I want to actually do something, I would say CID. Let's say CID. And let's call that one, let's say, um, I don't know. Um, I? <laughs> Whatever. Now I can say, for example, uh, 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 I dot uh, A is set to one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. Now if I go C out A, I, I dot A and L, you will see that the value that is printed will be that value that I just printed for you in double. But if I actually go back over there, I can actually reuse the exact same place reuse the exact same thing over here and instead of that uh, instead of uh, uh, the uh, uh, the double I can say I dot uh, B is set to um, say 987 if I can go and I'm going to go over here see I, I dot uh, B obviously what is going to get printed over here will be 987 All right, and I can go, um, uh, well, what do I do? I'm going to go um, something simple over here. So I'm going to say over here um, for uh, integer n set to 0 and n less than say um, 6 and in here I'm gonna say n plus plus and I'm gonna say i dot c n is set to x and 
x in here I'm gonna say i dot c x uh, 6 is set to 0 now I can say c out i dot c and what's gonna get printed over here will be x so if I run it this is what's gonna happen so now I use the same piece of memory for three different purposes and it worked perfectly as you see down to this point um, are we okay with this so for those who are full screen if you're not okay say no okay or ask question uh, because uh, you don't see my poll all right next thing is can I use now the value that I put in a double over there so as you see IA is set to 1325.56 whatever if I come back over here and see out I dot A and see what's in it you will see that that value is completely ruined so if I run the program you will see that uh, the the value for the double is something bananas you see that so that value is completely awkward it has nothing to do with anything and if I um, set try to use the integer it's not going to happen so union when you create union you cannot use one thing use another thing and go back because they're all sharing the same piece of memory writing one will essentially overwrite the other one and destroy the value are we okay with this all right and that ladies and gentlemen are you yes what I said is that oh no that's okay that's okay so for for um, uh, when you are dealing with a union each member variable of a union is overlapping with the other one which means if you write something on a double the value of integer and character in this case are not valid anymore if you write something on a character then the values of b and a that are double and integer are not going to be valid anymore so you have to make sure that if you're dealing with the with a union unless intentionally you want to see for example what is the character configuration of a double that you want to print it out and see what's inside but other than that it's it does, just doesn't make sense it's not going to work out so you got to make sure that the use of these things do not so when you worked with the double and you finished then then you work with integer it means the value of double is not needed anymore are we good all right so yes No, why? It's this is vi this, no, it's not a random number. It's actually it is not around. If you do this fifty times, you're gonna get the exact same result over and over. It's an uh, it's not undesirable number, but maybe you want to see what happens. Melissa, you have a question. Oh no. So you're saying you're saying if I did, for example, <laughs> uh, I dot C um zero. If I like something like something like one and I did it like this. Would it print 1,234 1, if I printed an inte the integer? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> sure. Six. Yes. Yeah, but it's by chance. It could it could have been six is it seven is it better it means so for this integer 
the rest is not used for this character now the last byte is not used they, they no problem they start at the same thing but it doesn't mean that it's it's gonna be used them of course I can say over here C3 and I still can go up to C7 and I'm not gonna get an error you got that Melissa Be yes, be because the rest of it is still within the union and I'm not overriding anyone else's memory. So, so in this case, it will work. But um, yeah, that's all. Um, I'm going to put seven over here. All right. Anything else? I really need to get a coffee before coming to this class because it's like five, six o'clock in the afternoon at the end of the day. But the lineup for coffee downstairs was like nine kilometers. <laughs> I am already late. I'm here. I started at five twenty. If I get a coffee too, then um, holy schmoly. Anyways, so yeah. So I'm just gonna remove this, not to confuse anyone. Okay, I'm just gonna let it be like that, and I'm gonna call it the union. So. We know it's a union. So C union, CPP. That's that one. The next thing we want to talk about is uh, uh, when we talk about um, auto and static, what is really like when you really need uh, auto? Like, what do we need? Uh, auto really when we are actually um, uh, using them so let's let's say I want to create um, a class that uh, is doing what the C string stuff are so let's say I want to create a class let's say over here I'm gonna create a class at new item so um, let's call, uh, for example, what do we call it? Uh, call it uh, C string. Okay. So let's, um, you know how to create modules. I'm not going to waste your time with that. Let's say I want to cre create uh, functionalities to deal with what the uh, uh, string copy is, uh, string length is, and uh, um, how to kind of read uh, uh, a, a string from the from the uh, from the input dynamically uh, to any size that I if, what what if I want to create something like this in OOP244 and IPC144 we learned that we're gonna create a module and in that module we're gonna have our function standalone and we access it later on so we essentially create a small library c-like library with prototypes being in some uh, um, header file and the the functions that are for that in a, in a in a cpp file like the extent of what we did was to create for example a namespace for it so we could do better than that so because we um, try to make it as object oriented uh, we make things object oriented over here we need to understand that we should avoid having functions that they don't belong to a class so what if i want to have a function that only copies a c string what that function should belong to because that function really is not something that should I should instantiate something and do a string copy with it so the function is really functionality only that I want and I want it to belong to a class too but if that's the case I have to instantiate the class I can do something good with that I can actually do this I can say okay I have a class so the class is a C string class okay so I want to have a C string class and I want this C string class let's make it shorter C string and I want the C string class of mine be able to say do a copy so like a string copy so I'm gonna say void as uh, void copy so that's gonna be a string copy or yeah copy and 
uh, in here I'm going to say character destination and then I'm going to do something like uh, constant character pointer source you, you have seen the source of this one in my OP244 uh, utility files that I have written so what I would do I'm just going to copy the uh, uh, the source to destination so I'm going to say while uh, the target of destination plus plus is set to source plus plus and do a string copy so that does a string copy from source to destination or what if I want to write uh, uh, a string length for example so I'm gonna write uh, integer len and I'm gonna have a constant uh, character pointer str and uh, so I'm gonna say a constant uh, um, constant character pointer uh, end uh, set to str and then I'm gonna say while end plus plus and then I'm gonna say return uh, the difference between the two so static cast of uh, integer uh, uh, to the address of end minus uh, the address of the string uh, minus one so that's gonna be the length and um, uh, let's say I want to do a copy and do allocation at the same time so uh, do things like that so I'm gonna um, let me just bring the code over here quickly for you because this is like uh, something that I have now I can bring it so I'm gonna copy this so that would be <coughs> allocate and copy so I'm gonna say <coughs> over here well I did I'm gonna remove that so I'm gonna say copy from the length uh, so get the length of the source, uh, allocate enough, and copy from source to the solution. So we are okay with all these things, all little functions that I have written in here. Okay, so when you have a character, okay, this, this SDR is pointing to a location, correct? Are we, is that correct? You're talking about line eight, right? Which one? Yeah, I, I want to explain. So you mean how it works in here? Okay, so that's what I'm saying. SDR is pointing to the beginning of the array of the character string. We want to find it length, correct? Now I'm going to say create another pointer that points to the beginning. I call that one end, correct? All right. Now in here, I'm going to say keep adding to the address until it gets null. Is that okay? Okay. And so when it reaches to the end of it, whatever the address of end is, is bigger than the address of str because this is pointing to the beginning, this is pointing to the end, correct? Because the end advances right keeps going forward so this is what's gonna happen so if this is the string okay str so str will point so str this is str this points to the beginning correct now end initially at line 10 is pointing to the beginning too but when I say end plus plus it keeps going forward until it reaches to the end correct so so end is gonna point to here now correct so address of end minus the address of the beginning becomes actually the length of the array correct Ta -da. It's just a weird way, weird way of writing it. Just want to, because you guys are three, four, five. I want you to write fancy code, so I'll write some crazy stuff, so so you can actually hack it and see how it works out. Okay. Um, anyway.
Oh, that's that's OP two four four. Static cast is essentially uh, cast of cast of cast of rel cast of relative types. When when two things are when they're when when you have two things that are relative, you can cast one to another. So you because because um, an address is an integer, you want it to be another type of integer. You do static cast. All right. So it's static cast. Those are the like the templated casts that we had, right? Dynamic cast, reinterpret cast, right? You, uh, mm, it's it's. Uh, th I think at the end of OOP two four four notes, take a look at it. I'll go through it again, okay? Next time I'm gonna go through. Next time I'm to go through it. The next time I'm gonna go through uh, all those. When we get to templates, I'm gonna explain those too, okay? And yet another thing I want to add over here is to receive uh, a dynamic entry from the uh, from the screen. So I'm going to add that one over here too. So yes, uh, which one is the third function we should you said what do delete what this one okay so you know what it looks like it's as if you are going to a restaurant and you say I want a new plate of food they allocate the food and they give it to you as soon as you see it they throw it in garbage <laughs> If you delete the destination, the whole allocation is down the drain, right? The, you know what allocate and copy is doing over here? Like, let's first see. Do you know what allocate and copy is doing over here? Yes, yeah, so you have a source. It has some characters in it. And your destination is just a pointer. It doesn't have any memory. Okay, let me do, let me do it like let me do it. Let me wait 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 wait. I'm gonna draw it. I'm gonna draw it. So this is your source. Okay. This is your source. Okay. Done. And now, this is your destination. That points to nowhere. Correct? Oh, let me finish it and then you see if you need to delete it or not. Okay? So this is the, the second one is the destination, the first one is the source. Okay? So what I will do at line 14, I'm going to see what is the length of the first one and I'm going to allocate enough memory exactly to the size of that one. Got it? In copy, I'm going to copy everything from source to the destination. Everything from source is going to go to the destination, correct? And now the function is over. If you delete the destination, what is going to get deleted? If you delete the destination, you are deleting this. Then what's the point of copying? Even worse! You are saying delete the destination before copying? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, deleted. No, that's not our job. D did I say allocate and copy? Oh, uh huh. Thank now. Now is so you're saying before the allocation, I should delete the destination, correct? Okay. When you are writing a, 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 a neshit, that's a beautiful thing you're asking. Sorry, I didn't understand what you're saying. So let me just take take care of it. We don't need that. Um, when you are creating a function. Have you ever like? Have you ever had those friends that you, that you say like, "Can you 
bring me a bottle of water and instead of doing that they do five more things that you're not supposed they bring a, a, a cup and then they put ice in it and they put water in it I just wanted a bottle of water why did you do all those things remember that you have you've seen people write that right uh-huh when you are writing a function whose job is to allocate and copy you are not mentioning that you are deleting over there what if they deleted before and they didn't set it to null then your program will crash it, right? Because they don't know. Your app, your function claims that I am supposed to allocate and copy. If I said delete, allocate, and copy, then uh, you would write. But other than that, your, your, your program may crash. It's the caller's responsibility to give you a piece of pointer that is free and is not pointing to anywhere. It's not yours. All right. Now, later on, when we learn about exceptions and how to develop exceptions, we could create some trick over here. We could actually check the destination, see if it's not null. We can throw an exception. Later on, you'll see how we do it. So essentially, if they call a function without selling us, sending us a null pointer, we crash on them. We can do it, but but not now. Got it? All right. So. So what this read is doing is essentially um, allocating an initial size of memory that we put it in here, buffer size 50, so it first does 50 characters. Then using get line, it starts reading that much. If user enters more, C in fails, adds to the buffer, reallocates, resizes, and uh, makes the memory bigger and continues reading after that until everything is done and at the end it returns exactly how much memory is needed so go through it at home and walk through it see how it works so with this read user can enter small big whatever it wants from io stream and it exactly reads the the amount that you want and sends it back to you as a c stream okay mm. now <clears throat> yes <laughs> no my dear okay so um, use your fingers later on to, to, to do it and see how it works out you see if you actually have the address of the beginning and the end and you reduce it it's always one more <laughs> so you do minus one just to fix it okay cool though but no that's not the reason <laughs> all right <clears throat> so yeah so um so what so what happens over here is that this plus plus adds to the address of n no matter what uh uh who was the person who asked that question that said my uh, no it was not oh it was you okay oh <clears throat> my sincere apologies can i know how to pronounce your name i'm sorry toyosi okay so toyosi is fine so toyosi um uh uh when you when so a code like this is written this wrote i wrote it cryptic on purpose actually if you run on linux it's going to give you an error so i'm going to say over here fix it for linux because on if you do on gnu compiler it's going to give you warnings and let that won't let you compile it but in here probably it will work i don't know it's actually 22 maybe it's not going to compile over here either i've never compiled it with uh, 22 but so you see this plus plus happening over here this plus plus happen even when end over here becomes null because it does it after do we understand that so your end is going to go one extra no matter what you do and because of that it's going to be one more and i'm and i'm compensating for that okay all right all right okay so now my point to all of these things that i have written over here is that when i actually write this code if i want to use it i have to instantiate csdr so I have to say CSDR, say, um, I don't know, 
uh, utils and and then now I can say utils uh, dot something and use it which is which doesn't make sense these are all functionalities that I want to use which is related to a class that is purely action there is no uh, um, member variables over here that I need to use if that's the case it is a good idea to make these functions class functions class methods not object methods by adding a static over here so if you make these things static then these functions belong to the class and not the object therefore you don't need to instantiate the class to use it and you have used many class variables before and class functions but you'll see so if I actually write over here CST I can actually say CSTR dot a scope resolution read now why is it not working static yada 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 it should be okay class yeah. oh because it's not public okay there we go now if I come over here I can actually say CSTR so I can say uh, character say name I can say see out what is your name and then I can actually say name is equal to CSTR read from iStream did I um, oh so I'm gonna actually set that one to be by default uh, uh, um, <coughs> by default uh, STD uh, C in so I don't have to write it so I'm just gonna default value in there there you go there you go now in here I can say see out hello name but I have to make sure I delete it afterwards okay so the point is that now I do not need to instantiate the the CSDR to use the functionalities that I want so at any moment of time if you create a function that you see is not directly related to your class for example you have you created the class name and in that class name you you need to do string stuff and you create functions like this inside the class that particularly is not related to name or you create a full utility class like this which you don't need to instantiate then always make those functions static because these copy len out it's not doing anything to the to to the properties of CSDR these are just utilities to be used for C string therefore you don't need to instantiate it and you simply work it that way so this is one of the use of static functions are we okay with this okay so so what I'm saying is that when the functions you write the me the methods you create okay does not affect anything in your class they are utility functions only so uh, they are they don't belong to your class in nature like as I was mentioning for example if I create a class name that is fully dynamic and I put over here character pointer value for the name okay if I want to do a string copy in this class and I did not have in C string class I would have written a function over here instead of using C string because it's because it's uh, 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 unsafe I wanted to write my own code to be able to copy or disallocate and copy thingy that I want to do between source and destination so if I write something like this in this name these are these have nothing to do with the the the, the functionality as of name or the behavior of name if that's the case then these become utility 
methods and they are better to be static so they are not instantiated by name they are not doing anything to the object of name but they are just actions of the class in general uh, am i making sense now hopefully okay so yeah so when when you're let me let me tell you something even easier okay when you create a function and you see that function doesn't belong to the object so if i have a name over if i create an instance of name if i say name uh let's say uh st name so a student name st name dot dot string copy doesn't make sense a name doesn't need to do a string copy it's not part of the nature of name so that essentially that function becomes something that is supposed to work with in terms of internals of name to make to to do something so it can function because of that you should make it a member of the class and not uh, the object uh, and that essentially are what statics for so let me remove this one uh, because uh, that's not part I was what I was saying so yeah so that's that so let me just run it make sure it, it actually compiles and runs there you go okay yeah so that's that uh, then walk through it at home and later on see what it, what it is mm. uh, the next thing is uh, uh, auto like when do we actually use auto uh, let's say I want you I want to create a class to um, use for debugging and in, a, in an application to just show different values and be able to turn it on and off based on uh, uh, certain things so so let's say um, let's say for this program I want to uh, debug go through it one by one and trace it and see if things are going right and wrong so I want to have a class and that class of mine I want to do tra uh, tracing with it and I want to be able to turn it on and off so it doesn't display the messages when I want to or get activated and display it if I want to do something like that that class becomes something like C out which means I do not want to create instances of it I just want to have one instance of it if that's the case then you create the class and you don't instantiate the class like that you just make the class tracer so this class tracer of yours has only one global instance called tracer and that's it so you don't need to uh, you don't need to reinstantiate it later on or have two copies out of it and what you do in here you create a boolean uh, um, flag in it let's call it over here trace and you set it to false so that boolean trace is set to false and then you you want to activate it so activate or deactivate it so you're going to say trace in here boolean uh, value so if bool value is true it's you got you got to you got to start showing the the values of the tracer otherwise you won't so you go m trace is set to value so you set to simply set it to true or false and in here i'm going to say void okay now uh, let's start doing things with it so we want to actually show something with this so i'm going to create operator exactly like c out i'm going to create an operator and i'm going to say in this operator i want you to show a message so con constant character pointer message so if you want to display a message you use this one and then uh, so i'm going to make it a void and mm. then in here i'm going to say if m trace is on then uh, see out the message so if message is uh, not null show show the message otherwise show null so essentially I do something like this so if message is 
not null. I'm going to go message. Uh, other than that, I'm going to show, say, uh, it's uh, null value. And put it over here so see how it prints it. So that's going to be the message that I want to show. And then after this, if I want this thing to work, I have to say return this so I can print something else afterwards. But what can I put in here? What is the name of the class that I say return that one? You understand that? Like we are in a dilemma now. I created an anonymous class and I instantiated it right after. Now I want to say return this. Or even here, I want to say return this so I can cascade this thing over and over and over. So what do I put over here to actually return the class itself? The answer is when you have something like this, now you can say actually auto reference, which means whatever the type is, return the reference of that one. Even though it doesn't have a name, the compiler will create an instance of it. And now you can actually more add more stuff for this to for your tracing. So I don't know, print an integer, print a double character, whatever you want. So now if you want to actually trace, you can simply in your application uh, have something like uh, uh, create something like uh, trace uh, tracer dot trace I'm gonna say true in here now I'm gonna write my debugging messages so in here I'm gonna say uh, tracer I'm gonna say creating name pointer and then in here I'm gonna say um, tracer reading dynamically one time. I don't know, I'm just writing something over here. So it essentially becomes something like C out, which you can turn it on and off. Now if I if I write run the code right now, you will see that these messages are going to appear between it, it's as if you it says tracing uh, oh wait. I should have said new line. I didn't do it. <laughs> so in here, I need to have, where's my tracer? New line, and in here, I'm going to put new line. I didn't put new line. So one more time. So now when I run it, as you see, it's just what is your name, and say read, dynamic, read dynamically one time. I didn't put spaces, and I put whatever, and I hit enter, and it reads it. If I want to turn these uh, messages on what I can do is simply saying tracer false and run the program again now all the debugging messages will disappear and nothing will be shown because the tracer only uh, displays the messages when the messages uh, the tracer is on the point is it's, it's a useful thing for debugging but the point over here is that because the tracer that I wanted to create was like see out was a unique thing what uh, I, um, I did not have any way to return uh, the, uh, the reference of the object itself, hence auto comes for help over here. Do we understand the usage of auto now? And we're going to later on see that when you have complicated templated objects that you don't know what uh, uh, objects you are creating and then what is the type of a thing then auto becomes your friend too okay that's that one yes Yes, yeah, so at com by compiling, compiler sees that this is being returned. Therefore, it, it generates its type at compile time.
uh, I think that be that makes your code obscure and unreadable. Use auto when it's really difficult to know what the type is. If you have a type, use the type name because that becomes a comment for a user that debugs later on. The, because compiler knows it like that and can find out what it is and f and and put the type that way. But for a person who debugs how they can know what the type is, they have to spend time to understand what it is. Uh, am I making sense? So avoid using auto unless you have to. Let's put it that way. Okay? Avoid using auto unless you have to. Or or when it's absolutely obvious, like in a in a uh, um, range base four, it is obvious it's an integer you want to go through. You don't want to type it, or you still have a long name that you want to type. You don't want to write unsigned long int int something like that. All right, where it makes your life easy. The next thing is forward declaration. What forward declaration is for? Um, we have talked about forward declaration in IPs in OOP244 in the projects, uh, but again, forward declaration is when uh, you need to have access to uh, name of a class before the class is being used. So. Uh, the example that I have over here is, uh, I'm just going to bring it up for you to see, it's something like this. So as you see in here, I am creating a class called title and I'm going to say uh, the title is going to be given to people, like, I, like sir and I don't know, uh, prince or whatever you call it, the, the titles that you give to people. You cannot give it more to more than 100 people, so I want to be keep track of the title that is being given to a person. At the same time, I need to know if a person has a title or not. So it becomes chicken and the egg. Which one I should put first? If I put title first, and if I put title second, then I put person first, I cannot forward declare title because title is instantiated over here. So if I say over here class title to forward declare it so a person knows what it is, there's going to be trouble over here when you are compiling it because it wants to create the title and because of forward declaration of the class, it cannot know what the signature of the constructor is. Therefore, it can't do it. But if you do it in reverse, which means essentially a title comes before person and you uh, uh, create a forward declaration for title because you are just creating a pointer and pointers are all the same size it doesn't need to instantiate anything for it therefore it can happen so forward declaration can only be used when you um, uh, create pointers or refer to uh, a class without using it that's what forward declaration is for uh, usually it's it, it's for prevention of the chicken and the egg scenario and also ownership um, are we okay with this yeah so whenever you have the definition of one class to another and click the other bring the one that has a pointer to the other one and forward declare the other uh, uh, the other class and you are perfectly in the clear and the people who are not responding Nishit, Kevin, Joey and Henley I'm guessing they are full full screen so I'm not going to nag about it all right so that uh, is forward declaration forward declaration dot cpp The next thing I want to talk about are 
yeah we talked about an aggregate so you know exactly what initializers are and aggregate how you so when you are writing over here title like this instead of actually having title written like that I can actually do it like this over here to initialize title to whatever oh, no sorry not that one that's the fault argument bad boy you are here so if I want to s uh, initialize title with uh, the title I can use the initializers instead um, just uh, keep that in mind and in here is the same thing too and that's that why am I getting an error in here because it's TT this is not TTL this is title oh actually sorry this is title this is mm, this is TTL and this one's gonna be title. There you go, that's better. Yeah, so so yeah, initializers are like that, so we know that. What else we need to talk about? that's that so uh, the next thing we are going to talk about any questions down to this point before we continue all right so let me put this one instead of the other one because uh, the other one had an error started speech recognition for some reason I don't know why uh, so that's that one uh, forward operation save all right so we have done the C string and we have done the uh, that uh, tracer thingy so what I'm gonna do in here I am going to uh, uh, implement a dynamic name up to extent and knowledge of uh, OOP244 so we have uh, the tracer class that we created we have the C string over here that is doing all the string stuff and using these two I'm creating a name so the name has a private m m va m value and I, I allocate and copy a name into name and in tracer I'm gonna say creating a name then I am creating a copy construct and I'm gonna say copying value using yada 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 and as you see now I'm um, doing a copy constructor so I'm following rule of three then I'm doing the assignment operator making a safe che self check doing a tracer again to show what's happening and uh, delete the value and then uh, allocate and copy that's uh, delete the value of the current one and then allocate and copy which is assignment operator and following the rule of three I'm gonna remove the uh, memory of the name at the end and do a little bit of printing and a reading and overload the two to print the value of the name and that's it so it's a simple dynamic name created with the OOP244 uh, rules and regulations are we okay with this name So if I if I um, uh, test the program now and see how it works in my tester, what I'm doing, I am uh, uh, my tracer is true. I'm going to set it to false first. Run it to see how the program works. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to run the program and see what happens. So in here, I'm going to create um, run the program just to see how the program runs. name Fardad hello Fardad and then it runs through the, the the program doing the following so first it creates it then it co uh, then it cre uh, creates a second one copying the name into it then it's gonna uh, set a to 
uh, a value, uh, a string value, which creates a temporary nameless Jack. And then it's going to copy the assignment operator into it. And then at the end, we're going to have an assignment operator back to back between A and B. And at the end, it's going to delete A and B. So we did this using the true without the tracer. And if we actually set the tracer on now to true, we're going to see all those stuff happening. Uh, and the tracer is going to tell exactly what happens one by one because we printed messages over there. So first it's going to do a C in and we're going to say over here uh, far that and I'm going to hit enter. Now all the stuff that are happening behind the scene are over here uh, documented. So it actually says far that uh, it's going to uh, set uh, create name BA as you see over here we are showing. It's going to say uh, copying far that and it's going to uh, do an assignment uh, because it's uh, you call it's calling the assignment operator, but because it's assignment copyright in copying, uh, it's null string. Nothing's going to happen. to uh, Nothing is to be overwritten. Uh, in the other one that I'm doing, a uh, set to Jack, it creates a temporary nameless Jack, assigns far that to Jack, remove Jack from memory because it's a temporary thing. In the regular assignment, it assigns Jack to far that. Jack becomes far that, and then removes two far that's because the last Jack is gone. Um, are we okay with this name thingy? This is standard OP244, uh, uh, what should I call it? Um, um, rule of three. Are we okay with this? All right, so. Two four four rule of three name. Is there a question? Please go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. I pr I I create the constant value and L so I can so I can simulate the NL thingy. <laughs> so the so you see over here, you say constant expression, NL is new line. <laughs> you just, I don't know. I just didn't want to put a backslash in there. Just want to make it look like NL. <laughs> you cannot do NL because NL is a, a manipulator and it works a completely different way. I could have created one, a manipulator for new line, but I didn't do it because that's too rich for our blood. Um, all right, so and L is not new, and and L is not a new line. It's a manipulator. It's a class that works with C out, inserts new line into C out. No, and L is yeah, and L is a manipulator. It's not new line. It uh, it doesn't know what a tracer is. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, where was I, where was I? So now we have this beautiful thing over here. And now we need to understand uh, two new concepts that we need to have for the class name. So when we are copying a class, let me just see if I have something in here that I can actually show. Give me a second. Mm. Just a second. I want to see if I have something in here that makes our life easier to teach the next thing. And one last thing. I'm trying to see if I have this. 
no it's not here so I'm gonna draw it so when you are doing copying what does copying really do like when copying happens what really happens is that you take over the action of copying because uh, uh, as we uh, remember from OOP244 when you have a class and that class has all the data within then you don't need to have a copy constructor because when you create a new instance of that class everything gets copied over here from that one f within within so therefore the exact copy of the class is generated therefore no copy constructor is needed when the class contains its data we do not need to have a copy constructor are we okay with this all right now that we are okay with this let's talk about something else when we do not have the content of the data inside our class so our class has a pointer and that pointer is point to something outside of the class if that's the case when you create a copy of this thing what you need to do is to take over the action of copying and instead of blindly copying all the contents causing uh, uh, crash at the end in the destruction what you need to do to actually measure the size of what is in the data of the other one create a copy out of the thing move all the information over there make this one point to it and therefore you have a copy and that is copy constructor construction are we okay with that are we okay with the copy construction all right so that's copy construction the copy assignment however is something else with copy assignment we would say that the object that you are actually creating already exists so you have your object whoops so you have your object and that object is pointing to somewhere and then you have another object of the same type that is pointing to some other value somewhere else now you want to copy this assign this one into that one get move the information over here to that one to do so if we did it like before it's going to cause memory leak so what we need to do now before the action is happening because the object is not brand new it already existed first we have to delete the old memory of the other one and then follow the rest of the rules that actually copy the exact same amount and put it over here and then and then make it assigned to that one and this ladies and gentlemen was copy assignment are we okay with the copy assignment so now when we are actually looking at the information as we look uh, as we advance to OOP 345 sometimes you have an object that you use so the object that you have is here and that object is pointing to some data that you want to use and then you have another object somewhere else but you know that when you copy everything from here to here and move everything from one to another the first object is not needed anymore if that's the case then copying is a waste of time because you have to first copy everything put over there and make point to it and then delete that one and delete this one that's crazy if the first object is not needed anymore if the next object 
the first object is not needed anymore what is more efficient is not to copy the data but instead make the new one point to the data that that one ha that that the other one has and simply sever the connection between the two now the second object over here will actually take ownership of the data of the previous one do we understand this process So this action, ladies and gentlemen, if the object you have over here, this action, if the object you have over here, if this object is a brand new object, is called move construction, which means we construct an object based on another one without copying the data, but instead taking the ownership and sever the other one's connection. And if the object over here actually exists with some data that you want to do to assign, it's the same process, which means you have the data over here that you have, but first you wipe that out and then move to the other one. Therefore, we call it move assignment. And move assignment and move construction help speed up the application's execution tremendously. It makes everything run extremely faster and the way it's done is not very difficult at all for example if i want to do a move assignment for this main of the name of mine that i have done let me bring it up over here so i can rename it i don't want to change the other one by mistake so we have the copy construction created over at uh, the copy assignment created over here so instead of actually doing the assignment the other way I'm gonna say I'm gonna create an I'm another name another uh, uh, operator overload operator operator oper operator overload for assignment okay now I need to make sure that the object that is coming in here that I want to copy does not need its data anymore. Can anybody tell me when an object doesn't need its data anymore? Can anybody tell me what type of object doesn't need its data anymore? I'm going to give you a sad story, okay, sad m example. A person, a person that you, that you like, like a person uh, that has lots of money and wealth and everything, when that person does not need their money and wealth anymore, turn on your microphone and tell me, when? When they're about to die. So anything that is about to die does not need its property. And remember how we could detect if something is temporary and is about to die? It's using the move reference. So essentially, now it says this reference that is coming in is the reference of an object that is just about to die. So the very first thing that we did to do, we make sure that that dying object is not me, <laughs> is not me. So we do the exact same thing. So the self-checking will happen. If I am not, if this object is not the same as incoming object that is coming in. So first we check that I don't have the address of the same thing that is coming in. And then after that, obviously I'm gonna use the tracer over here to show that this is a move assignment. I'm going to say move assign, okay, and I'm going to say n.m value, so I am, I am moving uh, uh, the, uh, what should we call it, uh, uh, the uh, value that I have in, in, uh, in n uh, into in here I'm going to say uh, m value 
okay the value that I have so uh, so I'm gonna say over here uh, When I say move assign, it is move assign, right? So it is move assign. I don't need to put anything else over here. And I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to go new line. I think that's going to be, it is actually it's done by assignment, right? Mm, I'm going to say by assignment. Just printing a message later on so, so we can see what happens. Uh, that's the new line okay so that's the tracer so tracer is doing uh, the message now when I'm doing uh, copy construction uh, when I'm doing assignment operator what happens first I have to delete the, the the current data that I'm supposed to overwrite so I'm gonna say over here delete my data there is no problem with that we've done it before so I'm gonna say m value so I'm gonna delete my value but in the other one, I did an allocation and copy, which means I allocated memory and copied the other one. Now, I don't need to copy. I just need to point to data of the other guy, the person that I'm assigning to, which is N. So in here, I can say M value. My pointer is going to point to N's dot M value. And now I have to sever the other guy's connection. So I'm going to say M n dot m value is set to null ptr so that's why i'm not passing a constant over here anymore and an assignment and copy assignment has a constant because i'm copying i'm not supposed to change but when i'm moving i have to sever the other things as uh, the other objects assignment by setting it to null and after that all i need to do is to return this And I can do the exact same thing for copying. So if I want to do a copy construction, I can say, if I want to copy something that is just about to die, and now all I need to do is to say that I am taking ownership I'm doing a mob move copy that is taking ownership of the value of M in a new one that I have by calling. Obviously, in here is going to be move assignment. So now I'm going to call the uh, uh, <coughs> the operator equal. So operator operator equal. But if I say over here only N, then the compiler doesn't know if this n is about to die or not because it is a reference inside this name so I have to make sure to tell the compiler that I want to move this thing so that's why I want to use the move uh, statement over here so I'm gonna say call the move operator this move guarantees that uh, the reference for moving we're gonna get called and uh, that's that that's it so now I have followed rule of five over here instead of rule of three and if I actually go to my main and run the main again <coughs> the main is going to change to something like this now take a look in my main now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say instead of setting B to A I'm going to say move the A to B. So now what's going to happen is this. It's going to uh, get the value of A, show the value of A, but after um, A is being moved to B, the, the value of A will be nullified. So you essentially B will take the ownership of the other one. So let me just run it one step by step so we can actually see. Uh, let me uh, start it. So let's put this one over here and this one over here. So now I'm going to go step by step. <coughs> so first it's going to 
create the name Tr tracer is true i should have put the tracer at the beginning but i didn't <coughs> so it's going to create uh, uh, get the name okay so i'm going to put over here fardad hit enter now it's going to say hello fardad <coughs> now I'm actually going to set B to A, but I'm actually moving. Because I'm moving, it's going to go to the move assignment, not to the move constructor, not to the move assignment. So it comes to move constructor, and in move constructor, it <coughs> obviously sets it to null, prints the message over here. It calls the move assignment, therefore it moves the value of that I had in A that was for that, so it's going to actually delete the value of me, whatever I have, because there's nothing in here, so it's going to be null. It's the constructor, but it's going to take the ownership of Fardad over there, so this one is going to be Fardad, and the other one is going to be null, and therefore when it goes back, now when it actually shows the value of B, B is Fardad, but if it shows the value of A that I did not show, let me put it over here, Now I'm going to say C out A. So stop the execution and rerun to that point. So I'm going to come right down to this point. Stop. There you go. Just going to run right to this point. Execute. So now that A is moved to B, now that A is moved to B, if I print the value of A, you will see that A is null. It doesn't have anything in it. And in here, <coughs> yes, go ahead. <coughs> yeah, so it, I'm ex if you didn't, it wouldn't have moved. But take a look at the next line. Okay, let me go to the next line and see what happens. Okay, so bear with me. I'm just going to come over here. So in here is now going to create a temporary nameless Jack. So Jack is going to get created. So it creates the Jack. Right. So it's created. Now see what happens. It automatically goes to move assignment. Because Jack is about to die. If it doesn't copy it it will die so it's going to take the ownership of it therefore the nameless so move assigned jack into null string which was a therefore the nameless that was supposed to that will die after this execution will be having no memory no deleting will happen it literally takes the ownership of it got it Oh my God. Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Let's say I have the Mona Lisa picture in my home. See, see, if when you type move, A is not a temporary nameless that is supposed to die. You want it to move. But when I say over here, Jack at line 138, Jack is a string that will be casted to a name. Therefore, it's a temporary nameless object that is about to die. So in 138, it is automatic because it knows it's dying. In 134, I make sure that I move the thing out. Why do I need that? Going back to my example, I have an amazing picture in my house. If I ask you to actually paint the copy of it and have it in your home, it would take much more than I gave you mine, correct? You follow? Okay, I don't know. I hope that you follow, but that's that's what it is. So, oh yeah. So so copying always takes more time, and sub especially when we are working with big data, you have humongous amount of data you are processing, and you want to pass that one to another object to do the processing, like returning it. If you do not move in your return statement, it's going to do a copy out of it. And that's, that's humongous. 
So each return statement a statement of yours is supposed to do a copy, but with move up construct, it's going to do a move instead. Therefore, the time is going to be reduced dramatically. It runs much faster. Okay? So that's, yeah, so that's essentially why it is. And thank you very much for keeping the conversation because we are right now online. I don't have the vibe to get the information back when you actually activate it and you talk back to me. Uh, so uh, um, then I know. Okay, so that's that. That's that one. So in here, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to call it. Uh, so this is uh, rule of five. I'm going to call it G uh, rule of five. I'm going to say name with rule of five. With rule of five dot CPP. And it's seven o'clock. The class is over. So that's uh, the rest of it. I'm going to uh, uh, talk about it in, in class in the lab that we are coming in. So I'm just going to post these things right now. I'm going to save it. Any questions before we end the class? I'm, do I'm not busy at all. I appreciate you telling me that to do it right now. The reason that I want to get out because it's 7 o'clock and uh, uh, someone else might be coming here want to teach <laughs> I don't want to because it's like you have no idea how many things I have to put here or there but let me put the uh, put the uh, thing right now thank you very much for letting me know and please always remind me to do that so I'm going to come to code over here and I'm going to say to artist get add okay commit September 19th commit and push and please always I thank you and always remind me to do that uh, to uh, push these back up it's extremely important to do so so you have it immediately and the recording is going to be on uh, uh, big blue button for the um, uh, people who are in class and for the rest I'm going to push it to YouTube and put it up because the quality is much better on that one uh, and yeah yes as I mentioned in class before it's going to be oh, oh my god I was closing big blue button by mistake can you hear me okay good so I thought I closed it. the lucky thing I slipped and I did not <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so everything I did from IPC 144 till today, end of today, will be in a quiz. Okay? All right. Uh, anyone else, any question before we leave? Uh, cla all, cla all class variables? Sure, sure, we'll do it. Yeah, static variables? Yeah, I think I did once. You have an example for it. I did it last time. Didn't I? Yeah, didn't I? Okay. So, yeah, so go ahead. Yes, but but const but, but it has to be created. Let me try and see if I can find it. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Um, let me share my screen. I'm going to bring the notes up and answer the question over there. Do you, you want me to do that? Okay, let me just share my screen again. So, notes. Where is the no uh, weekly schedule? So you know which one it is, so I don't look for it. The, which uh, this one?
Oh, I, oh, I can do. <laughs> Sorry, I. Oh, there you go. Classic. There it is. There you go. It was under my. All right. Okay, so. Of course it works. Which one are you talking? Which one? Yeah. Uh, right. Oh, this one you're talking about? Of, of course it works. But of course, you have in the header file, you have to make sure you instantiate it. So if you have a class variable number of horses over here, it has to first get created outside. So to actually, it's not initialized. It actually created and initialized, to be honest with you. Okay, so by doing this, so, so be, be, be behind the scene, you know that this there is only one instance of this number of horses between all the things that we have, right? And yeah, so yeah, this one, this one. Let me see. 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 There should be a. Oh, I have to ask them to fix it. There is no no. It, no, no, no. 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 is supposed to be a member of horse, and it's not. So probably it's ID or something or age or something. I don't know. Because this horse must have an no member. It doesn't have anything. This no is missing. So I'm gonna ask them to fix it. It's a ty typo. So probably this is. I think this is ID, not NO. Yeah. Yeah, don't forget. This is created before. It constructor is when an object is getting created, correct? Okay. Object of a class. Class variables are created when class is compiled. So they exist before you're constructed. They are accessible. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to send this right now to Cornell and say this is ID, please fix it. All right. Um, um, I'm doing the OP244, Cornell is doing this. If, if these are originally written by Chris Stravinsky, we are just moving it from, from that w HTML version into GitHub version, into, into, into OER. So, because age cannot be negative. <laughs> Does that make sense? All right. Okay. All right. Have a beautiful day. I'm going to send an email and, and yeah. Yes. Not, <laughs> I'm joking. It's not, I'm not going to ask you. What I'm saying is that if I write a for loop in it, don't tell me why did you write a for loop. It was in IPC1. Any all concepts from pro before till obviously it's going to be on only on what we had before. But I won't want people to say why you had a question from the like I don't know um, references when I when you are supposed to do you know I don't it, it everything from before till now. Okay. All right. All right. Um, yeah, as, as I said, you got uh, disconnected. I didn't understand what you said at the end, but um, I I hope it's something good. <laughs> Oh, you just said, oh, okay, that was it, so, all right, <laughs> all right, goodbye, everyone, have yourself a beautiful day, I have a long drive back home, I gotta go, bye-bye, bye, bye, everyone.